Welcome one, welcome all to this week's edition of the Lindsay Elmore Show. I am so excited to be sharing with you all about music that matters. My guest is Ian Morris. Ian faced his own health challenges and it led him down a path to explore how music could help foster our well-being. He now is a prolific composer who produces an album every single month of frequency-minded music to help people with personal growth as well as their own well-being. Let's get to the show. Welcome to The Lindsay Elmore Show, a podcast that helps you find fulfillment amidst chaos. On this show, I interview thought leaders, doctors, creatives, spiritual gurus, and game changers who inspire you to pursue your dreams, overcome obstacles, and leave your mark. In its simplest form, sounds are nothing more than waves or vibrations. They move through the air and provide humans with one of the most effective and vital ways that we communicate, not only with each other, but also with other creatures and potentially even other life forms such as plants and bacteria and possibly even viruses. The nervous system controls the body as it receives information from the brain, essentially telling parts of the body how to react given a certain situation. So for example, if you hear the sound of an alarm, your whole body reacts as if there is a perceived threat. A variation on the same sound can make you feel excited and ready to dance. On the other end of the spectrum, there are vibrations that carry powerful relaxation and powerful ways to tap into ancient portions of our brain. In nature, vibrations of sound travel through water and air. This is very important considering that the human body is up to 65% water. So vibrations are not only coming in and vibrating our eardrum, causing us to have the conscious perception of sound, but there may be energy that is flowing through our body through these vibrational waveforms moving through water. Sound is a powerful and a potent energy that helps to express love. It helps to express concern. We can have the sounds of grief, the sounds of pain. We hear the sounds of destruction around us. Human consciousness has been able to accept that we live in a world where these powerful sound vibrational energies that are made by not only music and the sound of our voices, but may also be sent out by positive thoughts through our meditations, through harmonies that we create in speaking and learning and singing with other people. These vibrations produce peace, they produce beauty in our world because they create an harmonic that lacks distortion. We know that the recitation of mantras can bring about a pronounced relaxation in our body. And we know that listening to music that is attuned to the way that our biochemistry and our cellular function is built to work can actually change the overall function and the relationship of our cells one unto another. So today I am interviewing Ian Morris. Ian has over 21 years experience in the performing arts field and has made it his life's goal to use his gifts and passion to be of service to people who are in search of healing. He is a multi-instrumentalist and he instinctively sought solace in music. It was during a time of very poor health that he came across information about the sacred healing potential of sound and vibration. 
he became intrigued and started to study more. What he then says is just a combination of divine inspiration, timing, and skill sets that he had spent years honing that all came together. He began creating and producing compositions of tones and frequencies, which led him to personally reclaim his health. In addition to the physical ailments that he was facing, he had a drastic turnaround in the suffering that he had with a learning disability known as dyslexia. Within two weeks of starting this musical journey, he feels like he had greater clarity, greater focus, and was better able to retain information. Within a year, his physical health condition and his dyslexia were completely trans formed. He has a fantastic story to st- to tell of working at the Interlochen City uh, Center, excuse me, for arts in Interlochen, Michigan. Shortly thereafter, he founded a nonprofit organization called Homemade Genius, where he worked with underserved communities to foster music, art, and after-school programs. He also tirelessly works to bring music and art into non-traditional venues in and around the communities. This means that he has worked with organizations like Meals on Wheels, Hospice, and the United Way to use music as a tool to help people release and heal from within. After seeing such amazing results, Ian wanted to go deeper into the healing power of sound, which led him down a path which pairs holistic options alongside mindfulness techniques. He started meditating daily, taking a moment to align frequency, breath work with the intention that he would like to see come to fruition in his own life and the world around him. His healing method quickly grew into the beginning stages of his company, Listening to Smile, which he founded back in November of 2016. Listening to Smile is now international. He runs it with his partner, Dana, and they aim to create a growing awareness for sound healing and aim to be true pioneers in the field. Ian Morris, I am so excited to talk to you today on The Lindsay Elmore Show. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I want to start first off by talking about the ways that you discovered that sound has power. Take us back to those dark days when you were feeling sick, when you were suffering from the dyslexia. What was going on in your body and how did you realize that slowing down and listening to sound might be part of your healing journey? Yeah. Well, you know, when people are find themselves um, in those dark situations, um, I was ultimately diagnosed with MS and colon cancer. That was what was going on. And so for a year and a half, there was all kinds of bouncing between doctors and specialists trying to figure out what was going on. And um, there was all kinds of symptoms. And when people find themselves at odds with their bodies like that, where it's kind of like, what's going on with me? And then you turn into that victim, victimized mode where you're like, why is this happening to me? And, <laughs> you know, all that kind of stuff. I feel like most of us get in this hopeless state where you feel very overwhelmed in fear, frightened of kind of what's happening and what's going to happen next. And so... Um, I was just at odds. I had come home from the emergency room for the third time that year. Um, and I was sitting on my couch and just feeling miserable. And I started reading this book called The Healing Power of Sound. Um, you know, I had done some internet research for, you know, just looking, um, trying to get pointed in the right direction. And this book, The Healing Power of Sound, was the first thing by Dr. Uh, Mitchell Gaynor. Um, wrote the book. And it was just something that I was already a musician. And it really just um, was an inspiration to see that something that I love so much could be a tool. And it was something, honestly, that I had never thought about. I knew music had a power, you know, to connect with people and to bring emotion and to 
um, connect with people on deep levels, but never to the extent that this book was going into detail about, you know, combining uh, breath work and intention setting and talking about intention plus sound, you know, um, as, a, as a tool or a therapy. And so when I first started getting into the music, it was just basic stuff off YouTube. You know, I started searching and just researching other types of music that were using the vibrations. And, uh, you know, a few weeks into it, I was already a musician and I said, man, these uh, frequencies are very powerful, but I just wanted something more creative, a little, you know, um, different than what I was hearing. And so I started uh, working with my instruments and learning how to tune the instruments to the sacred, you know, frequencies. And, um, and I started uh, working with them in my home. I uh, built a massage table with speakers underneath and a resonance chamber that would play the frequency into my body when I would lay on the table. Um, and that's really, you know, about the first two weeks of doing that, I started noticing changes in my brain, um, changes in my focus, changes in my, the way I was re uh, relating to my environment around me. Um, it was just like, I started noticing like, wow, this, I can tell this is doing something. I'm not sure what, you know, but I can tell that something's going on. And, and within, uh, I would say a month um, of, really starting to see the changes adding up that first month is when I started like reading the books that I was, you know, investigating and reading. And I started retaining the information in like a uh, crazy way where I would be able to tell people what page, you know, the information was on what paragraph and like people who knew me my whole life, like my sisters and my mom and my family, they're like, what has happened to you? Like, you're talking faster, you, you know, you, you seem smarter, you're talking about stuff like quantum physics and, you know, sound properties and, you know, all these different things that I just, you know, it's over our head. And so it was just really interesting to see just in a month's time of working about 20 to 30 minutes a day with the frequencies that that amount of change was happening for me. And, um, what I w would always tell people is that sitting with the headphones on with the frequency music was really the first time that I ever felt peace. I was always a doer, busy, busy body, you know, doing, doing, doing. And um, I didn't really know how to sit in peace. And so the headphones was really the first experience that I had where I could sit in stillness and sit in peace and to feel that emotion uh, really for the first time, you know, and in my life. And so um, that's what really led me to go deeper because you see those little, you know, snippets like, Hey, this is working. I'm going to try and go deeper with it. I'm going to go 30 minutes long or an hour long and, and see how it is. And so within a year I had lost 115 pounds. I weighed about 315, 312, 315 pounds. And so I lost, you know, over a hundred pounds in, in a year's time. Uh, the dyslexia was pretty much all but gone. Um, and this is something that traditional medicine will tell you that you cannot fix, you know, dyslexia. Uh, <laughs> and so I, you know, I just, I started seeing amazing changes uh, in my body, in my mind. And, all, and honestly, it was a spiritual awakening going through this process. There was a lot of, um, you know, spiritual themes that came up and, and um, got deeper into that practice as well. So there was just a lot of changes and, you know, I, be I believe that that is because sound, you know, as you said before, can change consciousness. It's, it's a, your mind body awareness has changed. And then the, your consciousness overall, the way you perceive and your awareness of your environment has changed as well. So a lot of people must think that like, oh, yes, this whole thing of like, you know, I need to be listening to music at this many, you know, hertz or that many hertz. It seems a little far fetched. But talk to us about the way that your body physically changes when you're exposed to music at one kind of frequency versus another kind of frequency like what are the different things that physically happen in our bodies yeah well what's interesting about like standard tune music and like what i would say is like top 40 like pop music is the <laughs> the music is changing you know every four eight bars 
you know, it's changing to a different from verse to chorus, from chorus to bridge, you know, whatever the structure of the song is, and you're getting change. And, and music in general is powerful. It's a powerful tool because it's an emotion uh, enhancer. You know, people, people use it at concerts to amp people up, you know, have that driving drum beat and a certain beats per minute, and you can get people fired up. And it's the same thing with meditation. If you slow the beat down, you can help people slow their brainwave activity and kind of calm their body. Heart rate will even drop. And, you know, so tempo is a huge thing. So like tempo can be used but then you've got like the emotional connections to lyrics, you know, and the emotion of the music. Is it sad? Is it happy? You know, and so when you put tempo and emotion, you know, the lyrical connection, and then also the emotion of the song together, music in general can be an amazing mood enhancer, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're using frequency, what we call uh, frequency minded music um, is a little different. What we're doing is we're taking the, the song and we're tuning the instruments from 440, which is standard to 444 or 432 Hertz, which is just a different tuning. A lot of classical music use that as a concert pitch in different time periods. Um, and we believe that it's more healing to the body, more sustainable and something that um, brings powerful change, you know, and brainwave activity, heart rhythm, all of that stuff. Um, but we then lay a tone as like, let's say we're using 528 hertz, that what they call the frequency of love from the solfeggio scale. It's a C note. And so when we play that note at 528 hertz, then we'll take a mid octave and a bass octave and blend it together, what we call like a tritone, not a tritone in a musical theory term, but just three notes that are basically stacked. And then what we do is lay the, the music on top of that. So it's a foundation. So from the beginning to the end of the song, those tones are being delivered. And so when people listen to our music, they'll say, your music sounds really full. It sounds different than regular music. And that's why is because it has those tones in there, that constant. And it has just a little added uh, mid bass and low bass range so that it sounds full and that it's, a, it's embracing the listener as they're listening to those tones. And so because the, the song has that constant delivery of that tone, the brain wave is actually, the, the brain is actually tuning in so, so that the brain wave actually starts mimicking the, 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 the uh, frequency that you're using with the tones that are being introduced. And so humans and songbirds are some of the few species that actually our brain wave and our heart rhythms are actually changed by the music that we're listening to. And it's really, it's just, a, it's a really interesting and powerful tool that when it's introduced with mindfulness techniques like intention setting and breath work in combination with listening to the sound, it can be a powerful tool for slowing people down, getting them to relax, getting them to kind of tune into their breath and kind of tuning into themselves because there's so many distractions today hustle bustle and just constant notifications and so much changing and you have to keep up with so much stuff in a day and so i think that it's people have really forgot and myself you know included in that um how to breathe and how to just kind of tune out for a while to give yourself that self-care that's needed so um it's just a very powerful tool when you add frequency intention breath work together in a song like that that's constant delivery so when I listen to your music, is there going to naturally evolve a breath pattern from the music? Or is that something I set myself with the work? Um, so tell us, like, if I sit down and I say, all right, I'm going to listen to 10 minutes worth of listening to Smiles music, and I'm going to take a moment to meditate. How would you recommend somebody go about that to get the maximal amount of healing out of it? It really depends on the intention that you're targeting, like whether it's a, an illness or there's some kind of um, other issues that are going on that you're targeting. But for the most part, just very basic breath, like for the, across the board, um, most of the clients that come to us, if one of the first questions I ask is, how much are you listening to music? And they'll say like sound healing. And I say, no, just music in general, how much are you listening? And what we found is a lot of people who had illness they were the people that answered, I don't really listen to music anymore because I'm, I'm too busy. I don't have time. I'm not listening to it. And, or I'm constantly thinking or I'm planning other things or I listen to talk radio or, you know, just different things. But there's no music 
in their life. And so that's one of the first things we work on implementing is just helping people to understand how big of a mood enhancer music is. Like I, I always tell people, like when you're listening to Bob Marley, at some point in time, everything's going to be all right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you're listening. Yeah, to this you're that just that in it. Good. You're like, all right, I got yeah. you, Bob. And, yeah. <laughs> and and there's something powerful. You know, you think about Bob Marley's Three Little Birds song, and there is something so comforting and so powerful of we'll share the shelter of my single bed. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, oh, that's what I need in my life. That's what I want. I want that comfort, that love, that security. And and so that comes from not only just the music itself and the groove, but then, as you mentioned, the lyrics and the emotional connection that we get with it. So, okay, so people who have increased incidence of illnesses may not be listening to as much music. And so when somebody says, well, crap, I got to introduce more music in my life, where do they start? So what I always tell people is that it's really easy once you get up in the morning to put on something that's a little mid-tempo and uplifting and something that just really gets you moving so that as you're getting ready, you know, whether you're making breakfast or getting your clothes ready, whatever it is, that's time you could be listening to music and kind of, you know, shaking your booty, having some fun, getting, you know, being more playful so that your day starts with a different tone and just like, oh God, here I go again. You know, here we go again. Yeah. 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 So that, and then also before bed, listening to peaceful music, a lot of people say, well, do I have to listen to it the whole night? And I say, no, just 10, 15 minutes before you go to bed with headphones, you'll see a huge difference in your sleep activity. Um, you know, and a lot of people don't understand how powerful sleep is for healing, like getting over an illness. And, you know, uh, people say, well, I get five hours. And I say five hours is the cycle time that it takes the last three hours of your sleep. That's why people suggest eight hours is that those last three hours are the most crucial. That's when your processes are going through the filtering and getting the toxins out of your body. So when you wake up and go to the restroom the next morning, you're actually getting rid of that from your body. But if you're only sleeping five hours those organs never go through the process of getting rid of the toxins in the body so it's something that people really miss out on for healing purposes and, and just maintenance purposes in general for the body it's very very powerful so sleep is very important you know eight hours a day I mean a night you know yeah it's it's absolutely critically important I would say of the patients that I see probably the number one thing that I recommend to them is you gotta sleep you know, you really, really need it. So does it matter if people, you know, you're saying get up, get some up-tempo music. Does that matter if it's like, you know, if we're walking on sunshine or if we're listening to some sort of more upbeat but still meditative, like frequency-attuned music? You know, I've seen those, those kind of scary-looking cellular uh, micrographs where it's like, okay, here's a cell listening to heavy metal and here's a cell listening <laughs> to, you know, does that actually happen or does it, does it matter? Can people just select the music that is more uplifting that they like, or should we really be focused more on music specifically for healing? Yeah. So I think you have to start with getting music back in your life, right? number one and number two i think what the difference is is that having those frequencies that are tuned to these different whether it's a chakra planetary frequency body organ frequency or like the sulfagia and schumann resonance all these different sacred tunings that have been introduced are very different in the way that the body reacts uh with sound and also that it's being constant the constant delivery from the tone from the beginning to the end of the song it actually allows the body to tune into that and connect on a greater level where the brain waves are changing the heartbeat is changing and in a, in a completely different way because the song's not bouncing all over the place you know all the different changes and being introduced with that constant frequency is just a very very powerful tool to help i always say that frequency is the great disruptor so having these specific frequencies that you're you're focusing an intention and creating those um mindfulness techniques with the, the sound healing music you're creating powerful change with the mind body as even down to a cellular uh, level, you're creating change in the body. So there's a lot of people like uh, Dr. Leonard uh, Horowitz who actually says that standard tune music is harmful to the body. So he's got a book called the book of 528 where he talks about 
the different tunings that are in popular music actually being harmful to the body. So depends on what school you, that you're looking at. Um, but I definitely, for me personally, I find a huge connection with the frequency of love, 528 C node and the solfagio scale and the tuning of 444, 444 hertz is, um, you know, just four hertz up from standard tune music. So those are so powerful to me personally. And like we've worked with over 1500 clients and, and uh, personal sessions where I've seen huge changes in people being introduced into frequency music instead of just regular traditional tuned music. So, um, you know, I'm probably a little biased, but I definitely see huge changes in people with frequency minded music over, you know, popular like top 40 tuned uh, music. But this really is the music of the future. If like Jay Z has recorded an album with 444 Hertz, you know, he's done some change and there's new hip hop artists and new pop artists all the time that are coming out because they're starting to see the benefits of using this music. And so it's, it's definitely going to be the music of the future with different frequencies and different intentions behind it. So, okay. Take us back a step. I mean, m- m- uh, the listeners on the show and me, we're not, we don't, we, 432 hertz, 528, <laughs> 444. What do we listen for? Like what, how do we discern that like, yikes, this music may not be healthy for me. Like what are we, what is our ear actually listening for? Or what is our body perceiving? Well, uh, I, I always bring this up whenever I'm in, uh, t- t- you know, talking points about this. We did an ecstatic dance in um, Charleston, South Carolina with our music. And when we were there, one of the guys was dancing and he came up to me, you know, and he was like, is this the heart chakra? And I smiled and I said, it is the heart chakra. And he's like, I can feel it. And he just like put his hand on his heart. And he was like, I can feel the music right here, you know. And and that is not an uncommon thing that happens at a lot of the sound healing events that we do. Uh, there's people that will be moved to tears, people that will start laughing, people will have these energy, energy releases in some form where they'll either start laughing or crying or they'll have these visions like of, you know, different memories from their lifetime that will, you know, resurface for them. Um, and so just like anything like massage, you know, work or Reiki or energy work or anything like that, you're creating movement of energy in the body and sound is very similar. It can do the same thing. Um, And so with that, it's most of the time people who are intuitive in any way or or have a like high body awareness where they're familiar with their body and they can feel, you know, processes in their body and feel when something's off or something's feeling good. Most of those people are going to immediately connect with this music and say, I can feel this in my root chakra. I can feel this in my heart chakra. I can feel, you know, and they'll, they'll talk. I can, the knee pain that I was having is being, you know, I can feel that it's like working on that because it's, it's that pain's lessening. And I always have a tenderness in this knee. And, you know, those are kind of things that we've heard, you know, time and time again. So it's definitely something that you don't have to learn everything about it to appreciate the music. It's just the fact that you're creating an intention with the musician, which is us in this case, um, to create release work and healing. And as long as you are setting that intention and then connecting with the music and the way, you know, some, some of the tracks we make might not connect with people and some of them will, you know? And so it's just, it's definitely comes down to, do you appreciate the music? Does it have a groove and a beat and something that's, you know, connecting with you? Is it relaxing and the time that of need for that? Um, Is it something that's connecting with you? And then on the deeper level, creating those intentions and breath works to go, you know, coincide with it is just such a powerful thing. Okay. So I think that that's so powerful that you don't have to know everything to experience the benefits. If you just let the music go through you, you can just, allow the vibrations to do the work that they do. So you do a lot of work in mentoring holistic practitioners, teaching them how to incorporate it into their healing spaces. What are the types of ways that massage therapists, Reiki masters, acupuncturists, all of these different people who are aiming to bring greater healing can incorporate music more effectively into their environments? 
Yeah. Well, the first thing you have to talk about really is music licensing. So a lot of practitioners are unaware that it's against the law. Like, let's say you bought a CD at a concert and then you came back to your business and started using that in your business. That's actually breaking copyright law. And if you're using Spotify playlists in your place of business, but you haven't bought licensing from Spotify or other performing rights organizations, you're actually breaking the law and can be sued for, for doing that. So um, a lot of like yoga studios that have multi yoga studios or people that have larger mid level and larger businesses will actually get letters from BMI, um, ASCAP and different performing rights groups um, actually, you know, doing cease and assist or uh, actually threatening lawsuits, you know, any, anywhere from 50, hundred thousand dollars, you know, it can, it depends on what the, the, uh, you know how long they've been using it and all those all those kind of things but basically what we wanted to do as uh, musicians and as you know uh, holistic practitioners ourselves was create something that was a win-win model for practitioners as well as the people you know the clients that were coming so it, it works like this when every month we put out a new album and it's based on the current events and the astrology and information for that month. So it's basically the collective energy for that month. We put together an album. So when they sign up, they get two free albums plus the month they sign up for. So they start with three albums right out of the gate. And then every month they get a new album delivered to them that will have all the frequency information as well as all the astrology information and just basically the intentions behind the music um, down to like what color, the chakra, you know, the chakra frequency and what color it works with and just everything so that they can make a um, judgment call for using it with their clients. And then when a client comes in and getting massage work or doing a coaching session and they say, man, I just really like this music a lot, then the practitioner can say, hey, I can sell this to you at a reduced price, you know, because I'm an affiliate. And then they're also able to use the music in their place of business, whether it's like background music on hold music, people use it as their podcast intros and outros. People are using it for videos, like a lot of yoga teachers need music to put their videos up on like Facebook and Instagram and things like that. So they, as long as they're an affiliate, they have permission to use the music in those ways. And then the big thing that everyone really likes is that when other holistic practitioners come in to one of their events or one of their, you know, online classes or anything like that, and say, hey, I really like this music, where where'd this come from? They can actually tell them, you know, if you want to use this, I can sign you up, get you $120 off if you sign up through me. And then each practitioner that they generate, you know, the referral and uh, the sale goes through, they get a $100 finder's fee for, you know, bringing that person in. So we tried to create multiple levels of income that would make it, uh, you know, feasible for them to invest in, you know, a, a program like this, but also give them multi levels of tools that they can use to enhance value for their business. And so that's, you know, it's, it's just really fun to be a part of that with all of those practitioners. We're in uh, seven different countries now, and it's just growing each month. And so it's really awesome. So wait a minute. Can I just like head over to YouTube and like click in that I want some heart chakra music or that I want some root chakra music and just go from there? I mean, what is the difference between just hanging with my singing bowl or pulling up a video on YouTube? What is the difference between really focusing on frequency minded music versus these other media? Yeah. So one of the things that we saw is that there's a lot of different people that have meditation music and frequency, you know, frequency uh, infused, um, however you want to look at it, frequency music, that's meditation music. But we knew that people wanted more than just meditation music, that people are wanting, you know, this type of frequency introduced while they're walking their dog, working out at the gym, running, all kinds of different um, activities that they're wanting something a little more upbeat. So um, a lot of yoga teachers want music for yoga. We have a static dance, uh, you know, a lot of different, even Parkinson's dance classes where people are saying we need something a little more upbeat. So that's why we introduced all these different styles, like in the frequencies, like sacred frequencies, like 528, we have songs that are in like trip hop, hip hop, folk, rock, you know, um, 
new age, you know, meditation, shamanic drumming, you know, all kinds of different music. And so we wanted to create basically a frequency based soundtrack for people. And that's one of the things that makes this truly unique. And the fact that there's also new music every month. So it's not like you buy a CD and have to use it for five years. You have something new coming each month so that it keeps it fresh and fun and you can kind of not get bored with the music. It's always moving to something new. So that's that's what makes it a little different. And then also what we found is a lot of the music on YouTube, there's a lot of um, incorrect labeling, <laughs> you know, like Shocking. it'll say that it's a frequency. Yeah. And then if you check it against, you know, an instrument or a tone generator, it's absolutely not correct. And so there's a lot of incorrect and incorrect uh, labeled um, music on YouTube. Um, so that's one of the reasons that I think it's just neat when you have a transparency between the company or the individual that you're working with, where you can understand where they're coming from, how they do it, why they do it, and then sharing that story with you. A lot of those channels on YouTube, there's no way to contact the people who set up the channel um, and there's not a lot of clear information on those channels either. So that's one of the reasons that we started doing what we're doing and trying to be more transparent with the people that we're working with. So I want to talk to you about binaural beats. This, I think, is one of those things that is it's one of those buzzwords. What does this even yeah. mean? And how do <laughs> you incorporate it into the overall structure of your music? Yeah. So binaural beat, uh, the easiest way I think to understand that is that it's two different tunes, you know, so your left ear and right ear are listening to two different frequencies. So like if we were using the left ear at four hertz and the right ear at eight hertz, um, these are frequencies below the human hearing range. You know, human hearing is about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz in that range. Um, the uh, And, you know, from what I understand, we lose about two hertz each year as we're aging, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, you know, and so uh, it's just, it's really a, a powerful way at, um, facilitating a new brainwave state. So like if, if we had four hertz in this left ear and eight hertz in this other ear, what the brain actually starts hearing is first, it, it, there's a wobble. You know, so there's two frequencies playing off of each other. And the brain doesn't like that disorder. So it actually it facilitates the brain waves, the hemispheres to you know, sync. So it's a hemisphere sync of the brain. And then the brain actually, people will report hearing like sounds in their middle brain. Like mm -hmm. there's like, it feels like it's coming from in here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that, what happens is it, it, it takes the difference between those two waves and it starts facilitating that for the brain wave. So at a four hertz generator, you know, the, the difference between four and eight would be the four. And so hearing that in the brain would make the brain wave step down to a theta brainwave pattern. Mm. And so the theta brainwave is the state that we hit just before REM sleep, like deep sleep. So um, it's a highly programmable state for the subconscious. So a lot of people that are like hypnotherapists, life coaches like to work with binaural beats and theta wave so that they can create, you know, um, declarative statements and affirmations to help reprogram the subconscious. So a lot of people love binaural beats for that. But for the average user, it's just, it's a, um, I had a friend who was a monk and he listened to some of my music and he said, you know, it took me 20 years to learn techniques, how to find peace and calm in my brain through meditation. But when I put on your music with headphones, it's just instantaneous. You know, it's like a, a just within a few minutes, it's like I can feel my, my body going into that state of peace and relaxation. And he said it took me 20 years to learn this. So binaural beats are a very powerful tool to just kind of cut straight to the root and kind of not have to go through all these learning processes to get your body into a calm state. It's just a very powerful tool. Well, and that's, it's interesting that you could, you would mention a guy who says, you know, I've never been able to create this calm. Cause I think a lot of people make the conclusion, I just can't meditate or I just can't relax. But right. what do you say to those people who just say, I just can't, I can't do this. 
Yeah, I was one of those people. <laughs> and so um, the the thing that really started helping me was when I started making the mid-tempo and upbeat music with the frequency um, and started getting used to listening to that music. I found peace inside of the mid-tempo and upbeat music with the frequency, but it gave me more confidence to step down into the meditation tracks and to um, explore you know, uh, the what was going on in my mind and body during that. And I think that a lot of people who are working with our music are similar. They're, they're coming in with the mid-tempo um, and kind of upbeat tracks, and then they're starting to explore deeper into the meditation. And so I, I would tell them that it's 100% doable, and it's just giving it the time, you know. And people think that it's this huge commitment like you have to like I've had friends say I just feel that you just sit at home and meditate for two three hours a day I'm like no I wish I had two or three hours to meditate but I you know about 20 to 30 minutes every day and then spending some kind of time in nature you know each week is just such a vital tool you know um, whether that's hiking or just sitting in nature just spending time unplugged from the phone um, and then just finding 20, 30 minutes a day of meditation. And like I said, it can be as easy as 10 minutes before bed and 10 minutes in the morning. Um, and you can create change in your life as in as little as time as a week or two weeks. No, oh, I love that. I mean, I love that idea because I think that so many people try to make they try to make meditation complicated and we make every excuse in the world not to take care of ourselves, let's be honest. <laughs> but I love what you said, because you know, you said 20, 30 minutes a day. Well, that may seem like an extraordinary amount, but when you think about it, just 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the afternoon. And that is what Darren Hardy suggests in his book, The Compound Effect. You know, if you can bookend your day by saying, this is my morning routine and I do not vary from this morning routine, and this is my bedtime routine, and this is how I don't vary from that, you can, through those series of small steps, create great change in your life. So, well, Ian, it has been such an honor to talk to you today. For all of our listeners out there, please go and check out Ian's music. As he mentioned, he is a prolific composer and puts out a new album every single month. It's it's hard to even believe how you how you do it. Please head to listening to smile.com and check out his frequency minded music intended for healing. Ian Morris, thank you so much for being on the Lindsay Elmore show. Thank you so much for having me. Hey, and special treat that Ian is offering us here today. He is going to take us out with some of his music. So sit down, grab a comfy seat where you can connect with the earth beneath your bum and take a few moments just to breathe.
I love the message that Ian Morris brought to us about using sound healing, mindfulness, and science to create frequency-minded music with the goal to help facilitate deep levels of relaxation that help us to tap into our body's own ability to heal long-term and find peace and well-being. When you join the Listening to Smiles annual program, you will receive access to different styles, genres, and tempos of music that are appropriate for meditation, sound immersions, diverse forms of counseling, therapy, and yoga. Head over to www.listeningtosmile.com and join the affiliate program. Use the code Lindsay Elmore, all in lowercase, to save $120 off of your yearly subscription. That is an offer that is exclusively for you, the listeners of The Lindsay Elmore Show. I hope that you will all go and check it out and invite a bit more frequency-minded music into your world. The Lindsay Elmore Show is written and produced by me, Lindsay Elmore. Show segments are produced by Sue Procco and Kelsey Lorman. Production design, sound design, and editing is by Jive Media. If you have a question about this or any other episode of the podcast, send us an email to hello at lindsayelmoreshow.com. And hey, since you're still here, take a moment to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And while you're at it, go over and follow us on Instagram at Lindsay Elmore Show. This helps us bring the pod to more people.